All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get started. Um, so I feel like God gave me a word for everybody. I really hope it touched all that it can touch. Um, basically, I know that the time that we're going through right now is causing depression, oppression, anxiety, fear, doubt, killing the good fruits, which are like hope, faith, peace, love, joy. We're starting not to have these things because of this crazy um, epidemic that's going around in the world today. So, um, yeah, just with all of that, I just believe God really gave me a message for all of us. It started with me. Um, it's something that I've always had inside of me, but I never really shared with anybody because, one, I wasn't smart enough to even formulate the words to explain what I believed or how I processed it and then just too um God had to show me that it wasn't me and that it literally was just him in my life and just helping me to maneuver and gain knowledge and wisdom on how to practice his word and practice our relationship like what I have with him and so um even now like I was struggling with anxiety to even do this. Um, I don't know if it's because I really don't do the camera. I don't know if it's because I was just so worried about what everybody else would say. Uh, more so the church than anybody else because, um, I don't know, just the enemy just want to use anything that he can to distract you or to keep you from doing what you're told to do by the God. And so, um, the introduction of this is basically um well no let me give my title first it's called the seven spirits of god versus the seven chakras now uh, i know you're already formulating an opinion i don't want to hear it <laughs> no but listen so what i'm about to give you is just literally the introduction of everything like i'm basically introducing um both sides of things but i'm giving you like the substance of what it means in regards to like the seven spirits of god because i mean i'm sure most some or if not all are like familiar with like what chakras are like or you know just hearing that from a foreign religion which is from like hindu but i know for a fact that not too many know about the spirits of god i'm sure people are like what seven spirits you know so i definitely want to dig into that and like um get you guys familiar with that that way we can kind of get through this thing together and just kind of process it all and kind of release some of the strain and the stress and the pressure because god if we you know believe in the promises he has made promises that he'll give us the peace that shall pass all understanding and the joy of the Lord is our strength and that he'll give us a laugh and he'll turn our morning into dance, you know, and things like that. These are promises from God. And so um, just before I get started, definitely want to make a believer out of people who don't believe and want to keep the believers who do believe. So um, just want to go ahead and throw a scripture out there and it's called um, Colossians and this is in chapter one, verse 16 through 17. And it's it says for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth visible and invisible whether they are thrones dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him and he is before all things and by him all things consist and so this scripture basically just justifies all that we believe that is a form of truth belongs to God. So even if we're pulling truth from a foreign belief or a foreign land, if it is a form of truth and it is found in the word of God and it aligns, that truth now belongs to him. You know what I mean? And so um, another scripture that I can give you that will give you some type of um, security and comfort would be in the book of Daniel. And that's chapter 2, verse 44. It says, And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom, which will never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. But it shall break into pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. And so basically, um, if we're putting this in a spiritual perspective, 
um, basically the scripture is saying that once the God of heaven begin to build his kingdom or his empire, um, as he builds, other kingdoms and powers and dominions will destroy because all power belongs to him. All the truth is in him and his word will abide forever. And so as long as he is proven his power, his dominion and his truth, it will last forever. It will stand forever. Nobody cannot believe the truth. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's basically what that is saying. And so how I can connect this to what I'm about to express to you is that uh, when it comes to like a belief system. Or religion. I really don't like to say religion because um, even though we practice things as believers in God or in Christ, we it's not a religion. It's more of a relationship because you have to get to know him in order for it to work for you. It'll only work if you work it. And in order to get the word to work and to get you know, the attention of God or the presence of God or the spirits of God inside of you, you have to know him. You have to get to know him. And so, um, basically what the scripture is saying that, um, when it comes to the belief systems or the religion is that once I begin to express this truth to you, I'm sure that no longer will you believe what is told about, you know, the Hindu religion because the Bible also speaks about us proving his word so that the God and the heaven can be glorified for the truth. So I'm about to give it to you. Um, um, a side note that I placed on here was uh, once you get the truth or you begin to know it for yourself, you can't unknow it and the truth never dies. And so, um, you know, just for everything when dealing with God, being connected to him is an essential. Like, that is basically the only way that you can remain sane in anything you're doing um, and make sound decisions and whatever else the case may be. Knowing God is an essential. All right. So, um, before we get started... <laughs> For, you know, some people in God that may not know or just people, period, who aren't religious of any kind or, you know, from another religion that may be listening are probably wondering, like, in God is, like, meditation acceptable? Like, is meditation godly? And to answer your question, it is yes. Um, and to prove that, Psalms 1914 says... May the words of my mouth in the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And so um, this clearly states that meditation is something that should be required because the Bible also says to um, pray without ceasing or to seek him without without a break basically because if you keep your mind on god he'll keep you in perfect peace and that's a promise that's another promise but you know it's like alchemy you know you gotta you kind of gotta have a mind of like a scientist when you're dealing with god because to whom much is given so much is required so he'll give you the promise of i'll give you peace i'll give you joy but you have to keep your end of the bargain so everything is like an oath or a contract in order to receive the promise like it's up to you to take it it's there but it's not going to automatically come you know i learned that from stephen furtick he said that it you know the promise of god is there but it's not going to automatically come to you you have to do your part by believing you have to do your part by maintaining it in order to keep it and to receive it and so um meditation what is meditation exactly meditation is a written or spoken expression pertaining to thoughts on a subject and in this case your subject would be um your spirituality or your belief in god and you finding your zen or your center in your relationship like with the almighty or you know the the heaven what is in the heaven the higher all right so let's get started into exactly where does the chakra functions come from and i have to express this first in order for you to be able to have a perception and gain um you know just gain kind of like an idea of where i'm going with this so um 
is basically a part of a Hindu religion, which is stemming from a practice called Kundalini. All right. So um, in yoga, now I'm sure the whole world know what yoga is. It's universal. <laughs> um, yoga, well, Kundalini in yoga is a female energy that is believed to lie coiled, like, you know, circled at the base of the spine. Now, overall, um, basically, Kundalini means a system of meditation directed towards the release of energies, all right? And so with the release of energies comes the functions of where it resides. And these are the seven chakras, all right? So the first one is the crown chakra, which is like above the head or whatever. And then we have the brow, we have the throat, we have the navel. Some may call it like navel and others know it better as the solar plexus chakra. And you have the heart chakra, you have the sacral chakra, and then you have the root chakra. All right. So um, chakras, which should be better known as the spirits of God, are connected to our bodily function functions, such as like your emotions, your thought process, your decision making, your higher spirit man, or your lower body man, which people know as like your ego or your fleshly self, and then your senses, and so much more. Now, the big question is that I'm sure everybody's wondering by now is, um, does does this validate the the Hindu belief? And I want to tell you this: no, it does not. But it proves all the more that. All things belong to God. All things belong to Him. All the truth belongs to Him. All the power belongs to Him. And even like your problems, your worries and your stress and etc., whatever else the case may be. Now, the bad things don't belong to Him in the way that you should blame Him, but the bad things belong to Him in the way that you should believe and know that He can fix them for you. Alright? So... Once we are able to house the spirits of the Lord, it then helps us to be able to go into ourselves gently. And what I mean by that is to look inside yourself with grace. Look inside yourself to know that God's grace is sufficient enough to sustain you and get you to your next phase in life without you feeling like, you know, it's the end of the world or that it can never be repaired. There's no wrong that you could ever do that would outdo what the Lord Christ did for you, which was redeem you of every wrong that you have made or is making or will make and that's for all of us you know and so if you know that you'll go inside yourself gently you'll know that whatever problem i am struggling with or facing um i can get through this with god you'll be able to figure out what's wrong with you and then be able to use God's word and his seven spirits to navigate through life and any malfunctions within your systems all right so now if God is operating in you as the greater then you should be able to um be able to like already doing or begin to start um begin to start to manifest the fruits of his spirits or of his light okay so uh, my spirit uh, my spirit i'm sorry crazy <laughs> uh, my scripture reference for that would be um first john chapter four verse four and it says basically oh there i go my gospel sorry about that um basically it says little children you are from god and have overcome them for he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world okay and so like to sum it up which sounds more familiar would be greater he that is inside of me than he that is in the world all right so that's a popular scripture that like all bible believers use including me like i have to tell myself that because you want to know god's word to be able to to keep it inside of you to know it to be able to speak against the things that are bad you know what i mean and so when you're when we're talking us as believers when we're talking about god being the greater inside of us we only usually explain it from the nature of it being the people as our enemy because um 
I mean, it's a given that when you're practicing, you know, the what people call Christian faith, but or when you're practicing the word of God and when you're you, you're making it a part of your daily bread in your life, you tend to have people to come up against you because our God is perfect. And so the more we practice our faith, the more we become like our God and like our God, we become perfect. All right. And so, you know, people, it offends people for whatever reason. I don't know, but it does. And so um, with that being said, we only explain that scripture from the perspective of the people like being used by the the principality of the air to become our enemy but in this time period where everybody is locked down in the house because of a invisible thing um is used to do evil against us we still have to remember that same scripture that you know greater the god the spirits of god inside of us than the evil spirit that lingers in the world and God is still possible and he still has the power to carry you through in life and maybe well not maybe is right now your life is in the house like we're just in the house all right so he'll carry you through those moments of isolation and this is a good thing you know with the enemy meant for the bad God would turn it around for our good and for his glory Okay, all things work together for the good of us who love him and it's called according to his purpose. All right, so you can take this time of isolation to just begin to um, unlock those spirits inside of you and begin to know God and begin to hear his voice and speaking to you. He'll send um, angels to speak to you. Angels of the Lord are still here to help us and guide us and assist us. All right, so... um. I've already gotten to the chakras and, you know, we got into that and you know the names of them. You got familiar with that. And so God himself has seven unique spirits, which with these spirits have distinct expressions of what it is and what it means. All right. So the seven spirits are named as this as follows. The first one is the spirit of the Lord itself. And then we have the spirit of wisdom. And then we have the spirit of understanding, of counsel, power, knowledge, and then the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Okay? These are, again, I'll give it to you, what the seven chakras would be known for in Hindu as the crown, the third eye, the the throat, the heart, the solar plexus, the sacral, and the root. Okay? So I said that to you again because now I'm about to show you um, how this is all connected and how this aligns, all right? So I'm bringing it together for you. So um, the spirit of the Lord is to spirituality, which would be the crown chakra. The spirit of wisdom is to discernment or intuition, which would be the third eye chakra. The spirit of the of understanding is to communication which would be the throat chakra the spirit of counsel is to love which would be the heart chakra the spirit of strength is to power which would be the navel or the solar plexus chakra the spirit of knowledge is to sexuality which, which would be the sacral chakra and the spirit of the fear of the Lord is to survive which would be the root chakra all right and so um, basically what I can give you um, I'm going to be breaking all each one down for you I won't be doing it in this video because I've already talked too much already <laughs> this is the longest I've ever spoken on the video but um, definitely want to get this in your ear and in your heart and your spirit but i will be breaking each one down and giving you biblical references so that it won't be like i'm just talking out my freaking head i have actual foundation um as to what i'm saying but um just to give you a small example of how this is connected how these things these 
so-called chakras which are energies actually are the seven lights of god and it belongs to him because um so the last one the the what people would know as the root chakra is considered the spirit of the lord like the fear of the lord um so i spoke about that on my instagram if you haven't seen it already you might want to check out my page i don't care if you follow me or not but i think that would be a, a benefit for you to kind of get some notes off of there um i did something about God had me speak a word about um, the art of war and it basically talks about you putting on the armor of God and so um, that emotion that it gives off is you know well, it counteracts fear basically so this illness that's like airborne and flying around here is like you know causing fear for everybody and so when you put on the armor of God um, you know it is it, it's, it's you making sure that you embrace the spirit the fear of the lord that way you can listen that way you're able to function under pressure or in a you know fight or flight situation because that's what this is because you're basically um you know for most people you're fighting for your life but if you believe in god you know that you're covered you're protected and so that's where that energy or that that light of God is being activated inside of you because it's kind of like, okay, Lord, all right, what do I do now? You're shaky. So at this point, you're ready to hear an answer. You're ready to hear some advice. You're ready to receive an instruction on what to do next in order to protect yourself, in order to what? Survive. Right. Okay. So, um... Yeah, so each spirit serves a different purpose. You know, like I was telling you, like the spirit of fear of the Lord. It serves its purpose in helping you to be able to cling to God and, you know, cling to his voice. And that and listen to whatever he's trying to tell you, whatever that may be. Um, so this video I'm basically coming to a close. Uh that was pretty much everything that I had to share with you. Uh it was basically the introduction of me um giving you the difference between the seven chakras and the seven spirits of God and what you really should follow by because um this is truth and you know this holds substance and i believe that you know there's somebody out there that could could use this and it could really like you know minister to so um definitely will be explaining more in depth i won't do everything in this video because like freaking i will fall apart <laughs> you know and i'll be here speaking for like hours talking about it if i've done that so um yeah just want to give you the introduction of things and later on i'll be giving you like each spirit of the lord and what it means and biblical references and probably giving you some examples from my own life because that gives you vision that gives you like perspective um and probably would be more beneficial i really do hope this help um i hope it leads you to um know that you know this is just a spiritual battle and this too shall pass and just kind of open up your heart to begin to receive like spiritual cleansing and spiritual stability because that's very hard to find in this moment in time in life of difficulty and again, I hope you guys have a blessed day. Oh, also, I'll be leaving, like, additional notes, like, in the um, the area where people usually leave, like, links and bios and stuff. Whatever. I'll be leaving, like, some side notes or whatever. That way you can kind of find, like, where I found the seven spirits of God and how it explains in the book of Revelation that the seven spirits of God is actually considered the lamps of God. Then they're in front of his throne. Like, those are the lights. They light him up, you know, because he is the light of the world i mean you know and we are light bearers we're supposed to be light where you know um no castle no no home no nothing can be built upon a hill and that can be hidden from the light that's inside of us and so um definitely want to leave you with that information and again i hope you guys have a blessed day and talk to you soon peace